terror is coming home to find that everything you own has been replaced with an exact copy. Renowned horror novel writer Stephen King is quoted as saying, Perceiving threats through natural intuition helped our ancestors to stay alive. Most of the time we can quickly guess if something is a threat to us, or not, such as a falling boulder, or having a gun pointed at us. There is that space between what we think is a threat and what is not one. This is vagueness or ambiguity. A dictionary definition for ambiguity is the quality of being open to more than one interpretation. Inexactness. Our brains can't exactly guess if something is a threat by looking at it, like a creepy mask or a clown. There is nothing wrong with a mask or a clown. There's just something a little off about those two things. It's just unnatural. Let's say that you walk down the stairs to get yourself a glass of water in the middle of the night after everyone else has gone to bed. It's so dark in your house that you need to have a hand against the wall just to get downstairs. You start to hear little noises that you normally would have ignored because you've heard them so many times. All of a sudden, you hear and feel breathing on the back of your neck when you thought you were alone and turn around to see nothing there. Well, something happened to me that might never be explained. This experience wasn't some kind of lucid dream or a hallucination. It was real. I was in shock and it took a little while for my mind to reason with itself and accept the alien situation that I was in. How else would I just wake up one night with a tattoo of the number three on my upper thigh? in a place that I've never been to before. A week ago from tonight, I woke up to find myself strapped to a chair with a black blindfold over my whole face. I thought I was hearing voices that sounded exactly like my own. Next, some unknown force took off the blindfold and I found myself in a dark room where I could barely see a single thing. A light then abruptly appeared and made a humming noise. And I saw that I was in a small room surrounded by six other people, all of whom looked exactly like me. We were all silent. We had no idea what we could say that would be relevant to what we were seeing. Hello, a muffled voice said over an echoing speaker. You are all probably in shock at this moment, and have nothing to say that would put any of you at ease. You may notice the uh, similarities between yourselves. Where the fuck are we? We all said in unison, and then sharply went quiet, because we were so shocked to have had the identical reaction. Jinx. It's all right. Your reaction is completely normal. Who we are is unimportant. It's the question of who all of you are is what you should direct your attention towards. Are all of you... you? Or are all of you individuals just like someone you may make awkward eye contact with on the street? The mysterious man was not making any of us feel better. (laughs) After all, we'd all woken up strapped to chairs in a dark room and found six other people in the same situation that all looked and talked exactly like me. And I had nothing to worry about. (laughs) That's madness. Like I said before, anything that I say by this point will not aid in calming any of you down so it would be useless to even attempt to do so. There is just one explanation I will give you before we all leave. 
There are seven of you joining us here today. All of you appear identical, down to that little freckle you have on the back of your left hand. I looked over to my left hand and saw that there was that little freckle right underneath my pointer finger. The truth is that almost all of you are copies. There is just one exception. By this point, I was, for some weird reason, actually starting to calm down. I must have been the real me. Isn't it obvious? You are all, by this point, assuming that you are the real you. <laughs> Am I right? Ah, this is where you are wrong. How could I be wrong? I must be the actual Joel. I know that to be a fact. I have all of my memories, don't I? What were the rest of these people thinking? We took the original one of you and copied your consciousness into the six other bodies that we created. And then we strapped you all to one of these chairs. You will all be set free and you will not be harmed by us ever again. But there is one catch. One of you will be able to go back and live your life the way it was before, and all of the others will need to start over. The ones of you who aren't so lucky to end up back in the place where they fell asleep will probably start planning to go to where you live now and replace yourself with a person who is living the life that you believe to be your own. We will make sure that you are not able to harm the one of you who gets to go back to the way things were. Ugh, this can't be happening, I remember saying to myself. There was a one in seven chance that things would go back to the way things were. What felt like only a few breaths and blinks ago. After the man stopped talking, Everything faded to black, and I woke up in a bed that was not my own, across from a huge glass wall outlooking snowy mountains. My chest dropped into my stomach. I wasn't at my house. My girlfriend wasn't right next to me, and instead of a German shepherd at the foot of my bed, there was a laptop that looked like my own, with a piece of paper on top. This is what the paper said. Dear number three, welcome to the Dolomites in Italy. This beautiful mountain range is elevated at 10,968 feet above sea level, and it is where you have found yourself living. You will find a safe in the closet that will contain all of your financial papers, passports, a birth certificate, and other things of that nature. You do not need to worry about working. We have provided you with enough wealth to live comfortably for the remainder of your years, and there will not be a language barrier when communicating with the locals. You will not be able to do a reverse search of your face online, but you can follow the original Joel online, and will be able to peer into his life. But... It will not be possible for you to contact him in any way. Now, go out there and go on some adventures. Find a special friend and treat yourself every now and then. You are still young and you have many more years in front of you. I felt so stuck. I haven't left my three-bedroom house yet. Groceries were delivered yesterday, so I've been fine. I'm just sitting in front of this window looking at an old photo album. It has all the photos from my first birthday all the way up to my last few days of my old life. But there was one slide missing in the photo album. I guess it was symbolic of something. Then I went into Facebook to find Joel. And at the top of his wall, he had 120 likes. <laughs> wow, 
I said to myself. I'd never gotten that many likes before. The photo was of Joel on one knee proposing to our girlfriend of seven years. Maybe that was supposed to be the last picture in the photo album. But I will only be able to see how one of the seven Joels lives the rest of their life through a Facebook and an Instagram page. I will never be at my wedding. I will never be able to meet my first child. I will never be able to sit down in a chair in the office of the job that I was working to have. All I can do is start over. Us humans live in a very strange world, which inspires so many questions that even the best of our thinkers don't have explanations for. We seek out answers, launching rockets into the depths of space, never to be seen again. We send boats into the deepest parts of the ocean in order to discover new places. But our brains are just too fragile to handle some horrifying truth.